What is happening, everybody? MG here. MG Covers bringing you a brand new sports handicapping video. Title of this video is a NCAA basketball sports betting preview for December the 3rd, 2023. I'm going to give you all my leans for today's slate of games. It's about, I think, eight games. And I'm actually going to post the final uh, plays via my Instagram story. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll be able to see those. Uh, Instagram screen name, MG Covers, cover spell with a Z. And if you're watching this video for the first time, greatly appreciate you guys subscribing to the channel. Still want to hit my goal of 2,000 subs by the end of the year. So we're about, I don't know, maybe like 98 uh, subs away. So greatly appreciate if you're watching this video for the first time and the channel brings you value. Uh, greatly appreciate you subbing. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the model with NCAA basketball to give some context. Last year, I had a client, a very cerebral client, came up with this concept that what he saw was if my line was minus five, my line, irregardless of the sports books line, those teams won at a high percentage. And the other criteria he added in is if they were home. And so – as you know, in college basketball, as well as college football, home team wins 70% of the time. And the concept that we know now, not all the time, but majority of time, teams that win also cover. Very true in the NFL, very true for large majority of spread sports. So if you sort of merge those two together, I did, I tested this concept during the NCAA tournament, and I think it was 20 and 18, just a little bit over 50%, but up like five and a half units. So it was profitable. And it's off to an incredible start. I'll give you those. Um, I'll let you see the tracker. I haven't officially started wagering college basketball. I'm just tracking this again because it's new, which is important. Anytime you're doing something new, you want to, uh, you can either make ghost wagers or have a tracker and handicap the game as if it's real, which is what I've done. And I'll show you that in a second, but I want to go through these games. So in, in essence, here's what we're doing. So we take a look at the model. These are my lines for the game. So it's unconventional, and it looks a little bit different because you're not looking for like a five-point differential like what we do in NBA or, say, NFL, but we're just looking for teams that are minus five via my line and are at home. So the first one you see there is Fordham at minus five and Cincinnati at minus seven. Let me show you, and we'll switch over here to the um, the lines, and I'll show you how I handicap this. Now, Fordham is plus three and a half, so that would be a play, and considering they're home, we will play that on the money line, which is probably going to get us somewhere – in the neighborhood of plus 142 or so. So that would be a potential play. Now there's one other step, and I'm not going to cover that in this video, but I will post my official uh, plays per se on my Instagram story today. Now, if you look at Cincinnati, Cincinnati, my line was minus seven and a half, but you can see here it is minus 17 and a half. Now, this is important when you're handicapping college football basketball, the average margin of victory similar to NBA is 11 points. So that means that the closer you get to that 11, the more difficult it is to cover that 11. So I basically set this criteria. This is after tracking this for maybe two or three weeks in college basketball. I set my criteria, and this is another important lesson for creating a plug and play model is you have to have criteria. So for example, I only handicap games that are 15 minus 15 or less. Meaning once a team is minus 16 to cover, I don't play that. And it's just based on what I've seen because I think I tracked the model, how I've described it to you now. Uh, We had maybe, I think five plays that were over, that were like 20 plus and we lost like four out of five. So I basically created a criteria to sort of compensate for that. So if we will only look at lines that are minus 15 or less. So, so as far as Cincinnati, that would be a no play. Okay. So let's now go back to, I'll just show you a few, cause I don't think it's necessary to show you the, the model per se, but I'll do it anyway. Let's take a look here. You've got um, Navy, 
We got Navy minus three, minus five, so that's a potential play. Radford minus seven. And I'm I'm going to incorporate away teams, but I need to come up with a criteria to handicap that. Um, probably more than likely, if I'm going to play an away team, I want to make sure a couple of things. We have value in the tra- traditional sense, meaning like we need at least a five point differential. But continuing on, we have Maris minus eight. That's a potential play. Illinois State minus 8.3. And you can see here, this is a good lesson uh, for creating a plug and play model. You see where Pittsburgh is minus 4.7. You might say, well, that's close enough. You might as well include that. But when you're creating a plug and play model to eliminate doubt and to keep you consistent, and it's just the best way to set a criteria. So if it's 4.9, you don't, you don't consider it. And that helps you. And enables you to pull the trigger a lot faster and eliminates doubt. Okay, so next one, Jacksonville State at minus seven. Mississippi State there at minus 15 and a half. I think that line's greater. That's why it's not included in this list over here. Moorhead State minus eight. And then finally, Sam Houston State at minus six. And we'll go back over here and look at the lines. <clears throat> via the actual model. Okay, so we mentioned Navy. Navy's minus 10, so that's a potential play. Um, and I'm looking at covers.com. If you're curious, we got Radford there. That would be a potential play at minus 10. A lot of favorites. Marist minus 8.5. Illinois State minus 1.5. So we actually have value in that game. And you can see they're 2-0 and at home already. Uh, Jacksonville State minus 4. Scroll down a little bit further, we have Moorhead State minus one and a half. And you can see there, again, a statistical property of college basketball, even if you don't have a model and want to improve your handicap, and if you just focus on home teams, home teams win 70% of the time, average margin of victory is 70%, I mean, 11 points. You can see a game like Moorhead minus one and a half, that definitely favors them there, even without a model. And then finally, Sam Houston at minus 11 and a half over Lamar. So again, just to review, we have Fordham plus three and a half. That'd be a play on the money line. Navy minus 10, Radford minus 10, Maris minus eight and a half, Illinois State minus one and a half, Jacksonville State minus four, Moorhead State minus one and a half, Sam Houston minus 11 and a half. And I'm pretty sure that, let me go back and check that Mississippi State game, but I, I think that line was greater. Yeah, 26 and a half. So again, and, and the reason you wouldn't want to play big spreads, you could. I'm just – the way I create models, I want every statistical advantage possible. And if the average margin of victory is 11, that means if you play a majority of the lines that are 26 and a half, it's always going to regress back <clears throat> closer to that 11. So more than likely, statistically speaking, you would lose more of those than you would win. So I'll post if it's a, quote, play – I will post that on my Instagram story. So if you follow me there, you'll be able to uh, see that. Now, let me show you the results of this. This seems pretty um, crazy that this would work. But look at, look how profitable this thing's been. Again, I know this is early, but it's actually off to an 8-2 and two start up 5.9 units. The only thing that concerns me is that majority of these are, are, are spread plays. Uh, we had one money line play there at Idaho at plus 170 back um, two or three days ago. Hit miss, but been very consistent this way. Obviously, we'll have some regression. It's not going to hit 80%. So, and then the regression might start today. We don't know, but uh, this definitely looks promising this way of handicapping. And I've never uh, played college basketball this way, but. Again, my whole goal with my entire business is to create as many plug and play models, put all the pressure on the model, tweak the model till it's very refined so that there's very little handicapping left to do uh, subjectively, so to speak. So anyway, if you want access to my actual power rankings, uh, we have a ton of sports going right now. We got a uh, new concept I'm working on for soccer. I'll probably premiere that this week. You have um, power rankings for the bowl games coming up. In NBA, that model's been profitable, I think, up 8.3 units uh, year to date, as well as college basketball. You get all that, 50 bucks a month. You also get access to all my coaching videos. We upload about one a week. 
and there's about 150 of those on the website now. If you want access to all my plays, 100 bucks a month, and that gives you access to everything you see that I just mentioned. And the best value, if you want to get an associate's degree in sports handicapping, only cost you 500 bucks for the entire year. You save about 600 bucks off the $100 subscription, so you get access to everything for 500 bucks for one year. It's the best value. Like this video, subscribe to the channel. Talk to you guys soon. Peace.